So, who is doing ambulatory aerodynamics? Okay, Alex is doing. Uh, so, if you do it, you should do it at the best possible manner. So, Alex is, is, is going to present the best possible manage, which might be the ICS teaching module of uh, ambulatory aerodynamic monitoring. Alex, the floor is yours. Thank you, Peter. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. In my presentation, I'm going to talk about ambulatory aerodynamics monitor, monitoring, as Peter has mentioned. Therefore, in the next 20 minutes, I'm going to present, on behalf of the ICS Aerodynamics Committee, an ICS teaching module to assist clinicians in performing and interpreting AUM. We have to bear in mind that this is only a teaching module. It must be used only for teaching purpose. This teaching module should be used together with the manuscript that we're going to publish in one of the next issue of the Neurourology Eurodynamics. In this manuscript, we have included the best available evidence and also this manuscript contains expert opinion if a reliable evidence is unavailable. To start with, in this teaching module, I have summarized all the published literature on the role of AUM in both clinical and research practice. I'm going to cover the indication, the technique and protocols for AUM, troubleshooting, interpretation of AUM traces, and finally we will look at the advantage and disadvantage of AUM compared to laboratory systometry. We all know, because this has been recognized by the ICS, AUM is a useful tool to investigate lower United Tract symptoms when routine systometry fails to achieve a diagnosis, when we have an inconclusive urodynamic diagnosis, or when the urodynamic diagnosis does not correlate with the symptoms reported by the patient, which occurs between 20 and 44% of the cases. AUM obviously has some advantages as well as disadvantages. The advantages of ambulatory aerodynamics is that it is a less invasive test compared to routine systometry because we don't fill the bladder with contrast medium on saline, but we fill naturally the bladder, asking the patient to drink. Obviously, it's a less embarrassing test because the patient is fully dressed and the patient is free from the aerodynamic through. The pressure normally are recorded for longer period of time, therefore there is an increased diagnostic accuracy in the detection of the truser overactivity. The disadvantage are that it is a time consuming test obviously which requires trained and dedicated personnel. Finally, it requires specialized equipment. The last drawbacks of AUM is that it has been reported and high rate of abnormal detrusor contraction when AUM is performed in asymptomatic controls. What about the catheter? When we perform AUM, we can use micro tip transducer, field fluid catheter, as well as air charge catheter. The advantage of a catheter mounted micro tip transducer is the fact they are very flexible. The low stiffness of this catheter allow greater patient mobility and finally have a low incidence of artifact compared to water fill or air charge. The fluid, fluid, the fluid fill catheter as well as the air charge catheter have been proposed in the use of routine systometry but their use in the AUM has not been proven and validated yet. The advantage of a single-use catheter, water fill or air charge catheter, compared to the micro tip transducer catheter, is the fact they are cheaper and they don't need to be re-sterilized as we need to do for the micro tip transducer catheter. However, as I mentioned to you, their use in performing a UHEM has not been validated yet. 
pressure sensor system have been also advocated are possible way to measure and record intra-abdominal and vesicle pressure. This might be possible if we use a tiny heart-tight capsule that are inserted into the bladder into the rectum, which then communicated with the portable recorder that is attached to the uh, body of the patient to reduce artifact. However, their clinical use has not been proven and validated yet. Different recording systems can be used. The most commonly used system and the oldest system are the Galtec devices, which they use normally microtip transducer. The only disadvantage of the Galtec devices is the fact they have larger recorded boxes, which is very awkward to carry on. Finally, these boxes, they lack of a patient event market, therefore we cannot capture the patient sensation data which occur during the pressure recording. New systems are now on the market and they are the Labory, the Gobi and the Luna system which are uh, manufactured by Labory and, Luna and MMS respectively. They are lighter and small compared to the Galtec devices and finally they have a small remote control which allows the patient to capture the data during the 4 hour test. They can be compatible with water air charge as well as microtip transducer catheter. Before we perform an AUM test, obviously we have to send to the patient some information leaflets where we have to explain what the test is supposed to do. We have to inform the patient that they have to attend the urodynamics room with a comfortably full bladder as well as with an empty bowel if possible. The patient can wear comfortable clothes which preferably is a gun for women. Before to start the study, Euroflow and urine analysis are performed and the urine are checked. If there is no sign of nitrates or leukos, which are indicative for urine infection, then the AUM can perform. The technique of AUM is very similar to the laboratory systometry. In other way, in other terms, the catheter are inserted into the bladder, into the rectum. And we have to be sure that we insert sufficient catheter length into the bladder and to the rectum in order to reduce the risk for this catheter to fail out during the four hour test. We also recommend to tape securely the catheter close to the external urethral meatus and close to the uh, uh, external anal sphincter. The patient can dress and the catheter can be connected to the ambulatory urodynamic system. But what is more important before we start recording is that we set the transducer to zero. How can we do that? Well, it depends what catheter are we using. If we're using a water filled catheter, we have to remember that the transducer must be set at the atmospheric pressure, having the transducer at the same level of the symphysis pubic. A 10 ml syringe can be used to flush the fluid through the tubing system in order to eliminate the bubble from the transducer and the catheter. If we decide to use the air charge catheter as well as the microtip transducer catheter, the zero must be set prior to start recording. However, it doesn't matter if we set the zero with the catheter inside or outside the patient. And it doesn't matter if we set the zero at the atmospheric pressure or not. Before to start, after we set the zero, before to start recording the pressure, we need to check whether or not the pressure that we are recording are accurate whether or not the subtraction is good. Therefore, we have to ask the patient to cough. It's the same way that we do during routine systometry. If there is a similar increase in the intravesicular abdominal pressure, then the subtraction is good and the AUM can be started. If there is any problem, we must rectify the problem before to start recording. Before the patient leaves the urodynamics room, it is mandatory to ensure that the patient understands and is ab able to follow our instruction. And we will look later on what are our instructions. We need to provide to the patient 
a bladder diary in order to ask the patient to fill the bladder diary and to record all the bladder sensation that occurred during the four hour test. We have to be sure we are recording the urine leakage and there are very various methods to record the urine leakage. We can use an electronic pad, we can use a remote control with an even bat marker button that the patient can use, or we can ask the patient to complete a urinary diary where they write down if they are leaking or not, or all the above can be used. However, the best method to, uh, uh, to record the urine leakage has not been yet standardized. We have to be sure that the patient understands that you have to fill the bladder diary and you have to be sure that the patient record any blood there sensation and this is important to make a final diagnosis we have to instruct our patient how to use the event button and we have to ask our patient to drink about two or four hundred meals every hour in some cases we can ask the patient to drink as much as they can unless that is contraindicated before the patient leaves Last instruction, we have to ensure that the patient understands that she has to come back to our office because we, every hour we need to check whether or not the pressure that we are recording are accurate and whether or not the subtraction is good. We need to check if the subtraction is good before they come back to void. They have to come back to the aerodynamics room if they need to void. They need to come back to the aerodynamics room if one of the catheter falls out. In these cases, the catheter needs to be reinserted. The transducer needs to be reset to zero. Finally, we have to instruct our patient to come back to the aerodynamics room if they need to defecate. In this case, the catheter needs to be removed and then reinserted accordingly. Obviously, we have to set the zero again before we start recording again. The other important thing that I would like to highlight in this ICS teaching module is that we need to be sure that there is a good quality control. How can we guarantee there is a good quality control? Well, we have to set each transducer to zero prior to commence recording the pressure. We need to be sure that the intravesicular and abdominal pressure are similar by asking the patient to cough prior to commence our test and every hour when they come back. Finally, we have to ask the patient to cough before and after each void. We need to ensure that the, the catheter are securely taped on the patient tight we have to ensure that the catheter length is enough in order to reduce the risk of failing out. If we're using filled fluid catheter, we need to ensure that there is no hair in the system that might affect the quality control. Finally, we have to provide information leaflets to our patient advising to attend the appointment with an empty bowel if possible. What about the interpretation of our AUM trays? Well, in the assessment of the quality of data recorded, we have to check, first of all, if the trace is active, whether or not there is a fine second-to-second -second variation. We should never expect to have a flat line. Secondly, we have to check if the baseline is static or is highly variable. We have to check whether or not the cough test is regularly present, and finally we have to check if there is a good subtraction. At the end of the test, and every hour, this quality control must be ensured. Finally, the use of a detailed patient diary or the use of an even market is recommended to improve the analysis of our trace. What are what are the contraindications for an AUM study? First of all, if there is a poor patient mobility, if there is any cognitive impairment, if there is an inability of the patient to follow our instruction, if there is a severe constipation, or if there is an active urinary tract infection.
finally, if there is any medical condition which limits the patient participation, then the AUA might be contraindicated. What are the recommendations that the International Continent Society Aerodynamics Committee believe? We all believe that AUM is most sensitive in detecting the true of activity compared to laboratory systometry, but is less sensitive than labor compared to laboratory systometry in detecting stress urinary incontinence. However, we all believe that AUM is a valuable test when routine systometry fail to achieve a diagnosis of when the aerodynamics diagnosis do not correlate to the uh, symptoms reported by the patient. Finally, it's strongly recommended to exclude UTI before to proceed carry on with the test. What about the scientific evidence? Well, there is no scientific evidence demonstrating the use of routine antibiotics before and after the test. Unless there, are, there is a high risk for UTI, such as diabetic patient, patient who suffer from recurrent urinary tract infection, if the patient has high post residual, in this condition, we believe the use of antibiotics might be recommended. Although there is no scientific evidence supporting the use of routine bubble evacuation before a UM test because they can cause rectal activity, abnormal abdominal discomfort, we recommend and we believe that an impacted bowel should be avoided. Finally, there is no clear evidence about the role of AUM in the assessment of neurogenic lower urinary tract symptoms. In conclusion, AUM is a valuable and effective second-line test where laboratory urodynamics has failed to give a satisfactory diagnosis. Unpublished data have demonstrated that AUM might improve the outcome of continent surgery because there is a high chance to unmasking preoperative underlying the truser overactivity. However, it is a more time-consuming test and it requires expertise as well as specialized equipment. But finally, more importantly, to make the most of his diagnostic capability and to avoid overdiagnosis, the truser overactivity, a detailed record of the urinary symptoms during the test is always recommended. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, uh, Dr. Digazi. My pleasure. Any questions? Any comments from you? So this is basically the first draft of this module. And what we also see is that in the module is, is a lot of, of about, about indication. I think we should discuss uh, whether we link to the guidelines or not and what we do. The other thing, I have a question, and that is about the measurement itself. And you say it can give solutions for problems that are not solved with, with, with normal office aerodynamics. And the filling of the bladder by the drinking and the diuresis is comparable to what we do in, 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 the, in the office aerodynamics. So it reflects static aerodynamics in a moving patient. <clears throat> However, I think that there's not much evidence that ambulatory measurements are reliable in voiding phase abnormalities, and especially in post-void residual urine, which, which is mentioned on your slide, that you say that, that it is possible to find, to make a diagnosis on the cause of post-void residual urine. And I doubt whether there's evidence and plausibility. Yes, that's correct. We don't need to use ambulatory aerodynamics to assess voiding difficulties. We don't need to use ambulatory aerodynamics to assess uh, post-micturition residual. However, when we're measuring the test in during the four hours, obviously, if we can have also aerodynamics parameters 
during the pressure pull study, they might be useful in a certain way, but obviously they are not mandatory in the diagnosis and assessment of voting difficulties. Euroflow parameter or pressure flow study are more important. So, but there's little, little evidence, I think, for combining ambulatory urodynamics with ambulatory urophlometry or not. But that's not something that you sure have not. experience with. No. Okay. Thanks. Other comments? Two comments, really. I'm just a little bit worried about the preload of drinking a liter fairly quickly. If this is meant to be physiological and that is not something that, you know, if your pa patient's not one who's down the pub every night sinking pints of beer, it might be quite difficult for them. And the other comment is you say that it improves the outcome of continence surgery by unmasking preoperative underlying DO. But you said at the beginning that there was a, a possibility of artifactual uh, overall or bringing up detrusor overactivity, which wasn't necessarily genuine. So, how do we reconcile those two? Yep. I can't remember just exactly how you phrased it because it was at the earlier slide, but I got the impression that you could have artifactual um, contractions which you wouldn't necessarily put down to detrusor overactivity. Exactly. Thank you for your question. I will start first of all from your last question with regards of the um, it might be useful to predict the outcome of sur continent surgery. Uh, in, uh, in brackets, there are, I put, every, the, um, that that statement is based on unpublished data. It was an abstract that was presented back in 1996 when birch corpus suspension was the gold standard for continent surgery. We all know that the failure rate, in the failure rate of continent surgery is also related to the fact that the patient post-operatively might start developing overactive bladder symptoms due to detrusor overactivity. That was a study that was conducted in 25 women, all women had ambulatory urodynamics prior to F barrage corpus suspension. They all had barrage corpus suspension. There were 27% of women who, are, who failed to surgery. And surprisingly, when we look at the urodynamic, ambulatory urodynamics diagnosis, which was performed on all these patients, all these patients on ambulatory urodynamics, they had the true of activity, which was not detected at the time of video urodynamics. So all the patients at video urodynamics, all the patients were underwent birch corpus suspension, all the patients were by a second blinded uh, clinician was uh, studied with ambulatory urodynamics. Okay? So everyone had a genuine stress urinary incontinence diagnosis of VCU, but the surgeon was not aware of the AUM diagnosis. Those patients who fail, they fail because they have the true sort of activity on the VCU that was performed post-operatively, but when we look at the AUM diagnosis, all those patients had uh, the true of activity shown on the ambulatory urodynamics. That's the only reason why I said there is um, unpublished data that m show that if we do ambulatory urodynamics, we might predict if there is an underlying pre-hop, the true of activity, therefore we might predict the outcome of surgery. The second question was about overloading. Obviously, that is not a recommendation. It's just an hypothesis. It's just an hypothesis in order to be, to be more provocative. More provocative we, you, we are during a test, more likely we are to detect the truth of reactivity. But again, next to that statement, there is in Brackman, we highlighted, unless it is medically, medically contraindicated. With regards of the artifact, yes, there is 
really controversy, a, a very contradictory, the role of ambulatory aerodynamics because there is a group that believes in AUM, a group who does not believe on AUM. And this is mainly based on the fact that they've been done, uh, that in the past there was a study conducted on 25 women who had ambulatory aerodynamics at the uh, detection of abnormal detrusor contracture in a symptomatic control womb uh, range between 25 and 68 percent. But an interesting study was conducted at that time by a group from King's, from Linda Cardozo group, that was back in 1997. When what they did, they studied patient uh, asymptomatic control. Uh, they studied um, asymptomatic control women. Each patient was studied with uh, AUM, and a catheter that were used were microtip transducer, but for the microtip transducer catheter used to measure the intravesical pressure, there were two transducer at the tip of the catheter and four centimeter apart. This means that each patient, the intravesical pressure was measured twice on the screen. The second thing that this group of authors they did, they asked the patient as well to fill a urodynamics diary in order to that they record whether or not they had any urgency. Then the start that urodynamics trace was analyzed in four different ways. The first way is just showing one vesicle pressure, one abdominal pressure, and one detrusor pressure with no diary. The second uh, way of assessing the trace was the same similar way, one vesicle pressure and the diary. The third way was with both the cycle pressure without diary and then both the cycle pressure and uh, the diary. And what they realized that if we use two transducer on the catheter that we put in the bladder and we use as well the bladder diary, the detection rate of abnormal detrusor contraction drop by 90%. So that means that the abnormal detrusor contraction, asymptomatic control woman, might be related to the fact that the catheter, the tip, the transducer, plays on the tip of the catheter, can touch the bladder wall, and then you will have on the screen an abnormal detrusor contraction, but the patient did not feel any urgency. If the patient feels urgency, and then has an abnormal detrusor contraction, on the screen you will find in both the cycle pressure and rise on the plus, on the bladder diary at that time, an urgency episode or leakage episode. That's the reason why these authors say if you want to reduce the number of artifacts, you must use a microtip transducer who has two transducers on the cycle catheter plus a bladder diary. That's it. Okay, so Alex, thank you for the art of uh, ambulatory monitoring. Um, yes, it's, it's not easy to build educational modules on the lack of evidence. And it's not easy to filter out what is what is good and what's not good if you teach uh, whoever uh, doing your dynamics whatever test. We are trying to to get move forward with this these modules. We will present new modules next year. We maybe revise modules that we have presented last year or this year. And um, in the end, you will find published modules in neurology and neurodynamics. We are happy as a committee. If you have an idea for a module that you send me or one of the members of the committee or the ICS office, um, that you have that idea, that you want to make a module. We are happy to support you and a working group that you are, um, let's say, um, uh, getting together to make a new model and to pre present that next year. We have ideas of topics, but you might have ideas of important topics that we yet miss. I have enjoyed you being all here. I think my committee have, has enjoyed the feedback that you gave and the, and, and the questions that you asked. Uh, we will move forward with this uh, project to fill in the pieces of the puzzle of good um, diagnosis of uh, low urinary tract dysfunction, um, I think for the sake of the, of the patients, but 
also for the sake of the pleasure of our own work. I thank you for being here. I hope that you enjoy the rest of the week or as long as you can be here in uh, in Rio and 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 uh, everything that's going to be presented in uh, in the abstracts which is front of uh, of science. Uh, thank you for being here. Enjoy the rest of your time.